Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is actually my first official sit down video since I've moved into my new house. So if you haven't seen my move in vlog yet, check it out up here because we're in a different location. But today's video is going to be a wrap up of everything I read this summer and we have quite a lot of books that we got through this year so I am going to go ahead and get right into it and we will chat about everything that I read this summer. So the first thing I read was actually Beach Read by Emily Henry. I did start this at the very end of May and finished it in early June. I really liked this book however I feel like Emily Henry's reads always take me a little bit to get through because there's not quite as much like happening in the plot to keep making me want to read on to the next chapter. Whereas things like, I don't know, a Colleen Hoover book get me through them a lot quicker because I'm like, I have to read the next one. Or that's sort of the similar case with like a fantasy book. Whereas this one is definitely enjoyable. However, it was a bit of a slower read for me. This story follows January and Augustus and January and Augustus are both writers and they are staying at these houses on I think it's Lake Michigan to write their next book over the summer and they actually went to college together but it takes January a minute to figure that out and there's the whole he broke up with her he broke up with his girlfriend for her trope but like a long time ago and there's a lot of also like family trauma in this and like past relationship trauma that gets worked through and overall it was just cool as someone who wants to be a writer myself it was cool to have a book where the main characters were writers that was just really interesting to me so overall i think i gave this book like a 3.7 stars out of five because it wasn't my absolute favorite but it's definitely a good read and i would recommend this to people especially to take on like a trip with you it's really that summer sort of vibe the next books i read was actually a series and i did a reading vlog of this so if you want to check that out you can it is on my channel but that is the summer i turned pretty series and i actually started this right before the series came out on Amazon because I wanted to read the books before I spoiled myself with the show. So I read the first book and then watched the series and then read the second two books because I knew that the first season was only going to be for the first book. And overall, this is rare for me, but I really think that I enjoyed the TV show a little bit more than the book, at least for the first book. I feel like there was a lot more happening in the season of the show versus the book. It was handled in a little bit more mature way in the show and it was also um, modernized whereas this book was written in like what the late 2000s to early 2010s so a lot of the references like pop culture references are a little outdated whereas the show is obviously produced in the summer of 2022 so it is more things that you recognize today. I will say that the third book made me happy at the end, so it's definitely worth reading. It's a love triangle trope, but it is not um, one of the love triangles where the decision is completely obvious, which is kind of an annoying trope, whereas this case you could see how both would work out well, at least until the last book, which one of the characters in these, I won't say who but I really liked them from the very beginning and I felt very betrayed by something that they did in the third book that made me really upset and you can see my full reactions to it in the reading vlog but I was needless to say not very happy with that character overall I would say these are more for a younger audience but they're still more they're still enjoyable for anyone in the young adults new adult reading category just don't expect much in the way of like anything steamy because these are made for like most likely middle school girls so they're very pg but they are a good story it's very engaging and also they have a tv show so if you want like something to watch in conjunction with the books this is a good one to go for okay the next stuff I read is by far my favorite things that I read this summer. This is actually something I started, I believe in the spring, it was either April or May that I read the first book. And the first book was a little underwhelming, but I overall still enjoyed it. It just wasn't living up to the hype that the internet had put onto it. 
which was the A Court of Thorns and Roses first book. So then I decided I was gonna give it a second chance and I listened to the audiobook of the first book again in the car on my way to and from work for like a week. Got through that and I was like, okay, we're going to read the rest of the series. And so I started with A Court of Mist and Fury and oh my God, I absolutely fell in love with this whole universe, the whole story, but mainly the love interest in this book and honestly the found family trope in this book. Mm, I just can't even explain how much I love this. So if you haven't read this already, because I feel like pretty much everybody in the fantasy book realm has read these, but these are great. And I actually just recently got the entire series of her Throne, Throne of Glass books. So those are on my list to read this fall winter season. And I also have the first book of Crescent City. I don't have the second one yet and I want to make sure I get it in paperback because all of my other ones are in paperback. And I also still don't have the paperback version of the last book of this series even though I ordered it and it seems to have gotten lost in the mail so I need to deal with that. But I continued on directly after reading this to read the next book and honestly top two so far for the year. I uh, am obsessed with these and this one is like the entire lead up to the big conflict and there's a lot of like intrigue political intrigue and like court stuff and then all the drama and lead up to the main relationship is in this book and in this one we're in full-out war mode like everyone is having political meetings allies um, you have the development of more fey main characters or like supporting main characters within like the immediate circle of people. Um, you see the greater development of the main relationship and also the teasing of a second relationship which is the focus of the last book that's been published so far. So these are both really good. I do think I like A Court of Mist and Fury like a smidge better than this one just because I'm obsessed with the main couple and the whole tension and pining and like wanting of the second book is just like unparalleled to anything ever so this one takes a little bit of a second place but I'm honestly gonna have to give them like five stars and like 4.8 stars because I love them so then I went on to read the novella which is A Court of Frost and Starlight and I kind of was pushed back to the little bit underwhelming side of a Court of Thorns and Roses because this one just well it's a novella so there's not a ton happening like most of this is it's a Christmas special pretty much and it's the main couple like talking about developing a family and getting a new house and then you have more lead up to the new couple that's coming in the fifth book so it's a lot of setup so that didn't make me the most ecstatic to read but I did get through it pretty quick because it's really short overall I'd say this one's like a three stars it just wasn't my cup of tea but it was important to get some of this information for the plot of the fifth book the fifth book being the Court of Silver Flames I actually listened to on audiobook because I did not want to buy the hardcover and I was listening to it before the paperback came out obviously because that came out what September 6th and so I listened to it on audiobook on YouTube and then ordered the version to get here and it never arrived so I really have to contact Amazon about that but that one was really good as well that one's definitely more R-rated than any of the other ones that are in the series and I don't think I like it as much as second and third book in the series but it is really really good so if I had to like rank them it would probably go A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, A Court of Silver Flames, A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Frost and Starlight. That's probably where I would put them. I don't want to say too much because the further I get into the books in the series the less I can say without spoiling anything. So if you haven't read them yet, oh my god, you need to. They are amazing and you will not be sorry. And then in August, 
I did a little bit of a reread of one of my series that I was obsessed with growing up and that is the selection series. I have not read these books since the beginning of quarantine. So it's been like two years, over two years at this point. I read them in the spring of 2020. So it's, these were my August reads. So it was like two and a half years since I've read them. And I did read the whole main trilogy and the last two that go with her daughter's story. And honestly, if I was someone who didn't own these already, I would recommend just sticking with the original three because they are so much better than the last two. Like, okay, so I grew up reading them and I did not have the second set, like the um, duology that goes for her daughter. I didn't have those when I was growing up. So these were my, my main squeeze. They were my favorite. I read these when I was about 16 over the summer at my parents camper. It was great. I fell in love with the main love interest and the whole like idea behind these is that they're like bachelor royalty. So they operate on like a caste system and then royalty is obviously one and it goes down to I think eight and the main character America is a five and that's like artists, musicians, all that kind of stuff and she is a musician and Basically, the whole reason that this plot happens is because the prince is of age to get married and they have this like lottery that they draw 30 girls from across the country. Um, and it's supposed to be like a dystopian version of America. So like the map looks similar to America, but it's all sectioned off differently. So she is entered into the lottery because her mom wants her to. She doesn't really want to because she has a boyfriend back home, but he's like a secret boyfriend because he's in a cast lower than her and she's not supposed to date down. Like her mom wants her to marry up and move up a cast. So she's been dating this boy in secret and he then pushes her to enter because he's like, I can't provide a good life for you, da 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 da. And long story short, she gets selected to go and she's like in shock at how much like decadence that they get to live in at the castle. And basically how it works is there are obviously 30 of them and Maxon, the prince, gets to date them all and eliminate people. And so by the time that they get to this book, they're down to like six or seven girls and then they have like four in this one and have to narrow it down from 30 to one. That's why the last one's called The One and then Maxon will marry whichever one of them he selects and there's a lot of like trials that the girls have to go through to be like a fit queen. Um, so they have to do like this presentation and they have to learn manners and how to like throw parties and there's a lot of like ball scenes which I really like. There's a lot of dress descriptions. There's also rebels that try to attack the castle all the time. So there's a lot of like trying to deal with a uprising. There's just a lot that happens. I always read these super fast because they're different books but they're all one continued story. Like you can't really read one and not be like I have to read the next one because it's all the selection process like you're not finished with the selection in this and on to something else like it is the full process of Maxon picking his princess who will later be queen if you're gonna read them you definitely have to read them back to back to back I went ahead and reread these just so I could give my thoughts on them because I hadn't read them in so long and the main character in these are just really really unlikable like her name's Edelin or Edelin or something like that and she's just not America like you're gonna fall in love with the main character she's a little annoying sometimes because she's so indecisive but the main character in these books is like feminist but like to an annoying level she's very privileged and like doesn't acknowledge it and just expects people to treat her a certain way because she's the princess and I just am not a fan like so she's the oldest daughter, oldest child of the people who get married in the first books. And so she's meant to take over as ruler one day. So she's gonna do a selection, but it's gonna be gender flopped. And now she's looking for a prince. And so they're pulling from all over the world. I think they pull some people, no, they pull them from Ilya, which is the country, but some of them are originally from different countries. 
So there's one guy who has a translator that like she speaks to him through the translator so it can be a little weird for her but I just was not a huge fan of this this right here I kind of felt like it ruined a little bit of the image that I had in my head of what Max and in America were like from the first like the first trilogy I was like had a vision of what their future looked like and this kind of ruined it so I would just probably recommend unless you're just real curious and okay reading kind of crappy storyline and annoying characters I would probably recommend just sticking with the original trilogy maybe doing the happily ever after like short little novellas that are all in one I have that and I haven't read it yet so I can't speak on if it's any good but I know they're from like other perspectives and I think most of them are during the time of the selection like one is Maxon and I think one is a snippet from the selection that the queen before had so I don't know I haven't read those yet but I have it on my list to do but I would I would probably recommend skipping these these were like two star maybe not even that I mean it has a decent end but it it ruined some of the characters for me so I just don't I don't recommend these at all all right, so that is everything that I read this summer. Sorry to end it on a little bit of a negative note with the dislike of the last two books that I read in August, but I have read 12 books this summer and I'm currently working on my September reads as I'm filming this, so we will have one of those. Don't expect 12 books in monthly wrap ups, but I am going to have at least three because I have finished Two and I'm on my third right now so if you guys are interested in seeing any more of my book related content be sure to check out the playlist with all of my book videos in there and if you want to see the reading vlog of the summer I turned pretty it is an hour long of like emotional roller coaster that I went through while reading those books so I would highly recommend checking that out if you like the series or if you want something to like tandem read you could read the series and like snip it watch the video or read it and then watch the video after to see if we reacted the same way but I will be attempting to post weekly from now on because school has been a little crazy and I also have quite a few jobs roles um, outside of YouTube so it is a little difficult for me to post as much as I would like to so if you have recommendations on what you would like to see, that would be great so I can make sure that the content that I do have time to produce is what you guys are interested in seeing. So be sure to leave a comment down below if you want more reading vlogs, if you like these wrap ups, if you want more like college lifestyle content, I can do that as well. Just let me know what you guys are interested in because I would love to know and it really helps me out. Also be sure if you liked this to give me a thumbs up and also hit subscribe because I am well on my way to 2,000 subscribers and it makes me really excited for where the future of this channel is going. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that button and comment which book that I read this summer. If you've read any of them, let me know which ones. And if you've read more than one, which one of them is your favorite? I would love to know. But thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!